we've got in our hand this morning. I appreciate my Bible. Amen. In days like these, little book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter, one of the Hebrew Christian epistles. There were several of those. Hebrews, I believe without a doubt that the Apostle Paul was the author of it. I think he signed the book. Uh, I don't want to get in that this morning. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, he told what his salutation was with his own hand, and you find that signature at the end of Hebrews. Uh, but the book of Hebrews, and then you've got the book of James, and then you've got first, second Peter. Uh, these are what are called Hebrew Christian epistles. Now, we started last week. I'm going to start a little mini-series just in chapter number 1. Not, not the way I preached through the book uh, earlier, about five or six years ago, I preached through the book of First Peter. But I want to look at something that just really jumped out to me the other day as I was doing my own personal reading. He started it with Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, here's who he's writing to. To the strangers. What's a stranger? It doesn't mean they're strange people necessarily, even though they were in the eyes of the world. But they were strangers in the country to where they were dispersed. These were written to transition dispersed Jews. Now notice the way he qualified them. The strangers scattered. I don't want to get back into the historical part too much, but because of the apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, listen, he scattered the church to get the great commission done. God told them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. They're staying in Jerusalem, building a super church. 3,000 men alone saved on the day of Pentecost. Two or three days later, 5,000 men saved. You're talking about the women and the young people that came to Christ along with this. I'm going to say within a week, they went from 120 upstairs to probably 20,000 people within this Local assembly. Boy, boy, you get to the book of Acts, chapter number 2. Uh, they were house to house, eating with each other, fellowshipping, going out, while trying to win people to Christ. Souls were being added daily, such as the Lord should add. They were adding them. Big church. Hey, God didn't tell them stay in Jerusalem. He said that when you're endued with power from on high, He said you go into all the world, preach the gospel. We've got... Uh, Acts chapter number 1, verse number 9. We've got the great commission that was given to them. Hey, I'm talking about a work to be done. Now what happened was when Saul of Tarsus stomped that church. You ever stomped a fire and watched the embers go? God raised up an instrument of persecution to get them right. You know, sometimes God uses tribulations and trials in our life not just to get us right, but to get us going. You know, easy to get comfortable, is it not? Uh, Barbara, she can't pass by the living room last night. We'd been out all day yesterday, and she passed by, and she said, you look comfortable in your recliner. <laughs> Man, I was laid back. I've got one of these oversized recliner. Uh, that's, hey, I don't fit in. Did you know it's big enough? Barbara and I can sit side by side in it. But I figured one day I might increase a little bit. You know, if salvation makes your bones wax fat, I might increase. So, hey, just comfortable in it. They were comfortable, all right? They were comfortable. And God used this man. Then after he scattered them, he saved that instrument of persecution, renamed him the Apostle Paul, and sent him to the Gentiles. But we find these letters. Now, these people were limited in their spiritual growth at this time. Let me deal with that historically just a minute. They were basically new converts. Transitioning from the old covenant to the new. That was hard for them. They had always walked in the shadow of Zerubbabel's temple. That's all they knew was the priesthood and the offerings and the temple work that went on. Hey, right in the center of Jerusalem, right out up on where we call the Temple Mount, that huge temple was built and they walked and now all of a sudden they'd come to know the Messiah and they were, one, persecuted. Two, their own people didn't like them because they came to Christianity. You remember what happened to Apostle Paul in Acts chapter number 9? For him, when he got saved and began to immediately preach, preach Christ, they had to let him down over the wall in a basket. They hated him. 
They were hated. They sent them to the Gentiles. Now they're out there. The Gentiles didn't like the Jews. But I've got news for you. The Jews didn't like the Gentile dogs either. So you had that conflict in their ethnic groups that still is until this day. The most hated people on earth are being bombarded today. I got a thing from one of our missionaries over there in two days. Over 1,000 rockets were fired into Israel in two days. He said they were going to these bomb shelters two and three times a day just in their communities. He told how many seconds that they gave them to get there. And he said where they lived, they told him you need to be able to get into one of them within one minute and a half from the time you hear those sirens because this thing's already launched. They were hated people. I said they were new converts. One, they did not have the complete canon of Scripture. You need to understand, this Bible you got was not canonized until 200 years or so later than their lifetime. I doubt if many of them even had a copy of a manuscript. You say, how'd they get the Word of God? From reading in the synagogues and from reading the Word of God. But now there's nobody there to read to them. They also do not have assemblies like they had because the Bible said they scattered. Why? Because when they started to bunch up, they were easier to recognize. So what they did, they just scattered and kind of melted in to society. A lot of just don't want to get into the border issue, but that's what's happening because when they colonize, friend, they start getting together. Now they can do that more than they did. But what happened, they just quietly moved in and, and hid in public, all right? Just simply hid. That's what happened to these people. Now, they're not getting the Word of God through a pastor teacher. So we find that they were having some doubts. Now I said all that to say this. I'm setting that they doubted certain things. Paul's writing to them to try to help these doubts. Now I want to read verses 2 down through verse number 5. And I want to deal with that for a minute this morning. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. You say, well boy, if they were elect. Hey, now what happens is they're already saved, right? They're looking backward at how they got elect. Don't let election scare you to death. Don't let predestination scare you to death. God never predestined anybody to heaven or hell with them not having done good or bad. Listen, we're not Calvinist. So what happened is he's looking backward right there. These people are already saved. They're looking back at what happened. What? They applied that sprinkling of the blood of Christ. Then there was sanctification through the Spirit. And then when they got saved, they entered into that election and predestination to be conformed to the image of Christ. I don't want to get into that. It's a big subject, all right? Somebody said it's a deep subject for such a shallow mind. Well, maybe we get into that this morning. But what I want to deal with this morning was he starts dealing first. This is interesting. I'm preaching on remind me, Lord. Paul is reminding them in chapter number 1. The first thing he reminded them of was their salvation. They were doubting their relationship with God. Why would God let His kids suffer the way you and I suffer? Hey, God could stop it, couldn't He? God chooses not to stop it. Why? Because your children will never grow up until they learn to deal with problems. As long as they're sitting at home and mom and dad straighten everything out for them and do everything and and thank God for the nest of home. But you young people, hey, you're saying, I'll be glad when I get out on my own. Oh, let me tell you something. There's going to be some slow walking and sad singing. (laughs) You're going to learn something when you get out of that house, all right? Life is tough. 
Life is hard. It's not easy. It's never been easy. It'll never be easy. Life is tough. So what happened was he's writing to them because they're looking back and say, Lord, what's our relationship with Israel? Are we still Jews or what? We got saved. Of course they're Jews. They're just saved Jews. I'm a Gentile. I'm a saved Gentile. They were doubting their relationship with each other. They were scattered. They were del- hey, these people were kind of shaken on their foundations because they thought when they got saved, everything going to be all right. Spiritually, it is. But physically, it's not. Now, they didn't have a Bible, didn't have the canon of Scripture. They couldn't sit down and thank God, I can go sit on my deck when I'm having problems and I can start reading the Word of God and get help from it. They didn't have a Bible in their hands. Better thank God for your Bible. Everybody here probably got a Bible in the house. Some of you got Bibles on all the shelves. I've got Bibles everywhere. Barbara, how many Bibles have I got? You have no idea. I've got, I've got them everywhere. I've got them in, oh, let me tell you, there's a Bible all over our house. We thank God for it this morning that we've got a copy of the Scripture. They didn't have what you've got here. So they doubt it. Now, notice what he said. Verse number 3, Blessed be the God. Here they are. They're getting whipped. Paul, hey, Peter said, I want you to bless the Lord, all right? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which hath, according to His abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Huh? What's he telling that verse? He's telling them it's going to be tough until the day you go home and then we're going to reveal to you some things. Listen, now, they had problems. Now, what's it got to do with us? Because we have people today that doubt to some degree their relationship with God who have been saved. I heard a dumb preacher one time say, if you ever doubted your salvation, you need to get saved. Oh my, why did he write the book of 1 John? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. You say, what's that mean? They were saved. That you may know that you have eternal life and then that you might believe upon the name of the Son of God. He said now that you're saved, I want you to know you're saved forever and then I want you to trust God with what's coming down the pipes, friend. Hey, these people paid a price for their confession of faith. He was writing to the Romans people that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You remember that verse? And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved for the, with a heart man believeth unto righteousness. What are you saved with? Your mouth or your heart? You're saved with your heart. But confession was made unto something that took place. He said confession is made unto something that happened. I believe the moment you put your repentant heart in the hands of God, friend, it is a sealed deal. You understand? I believe if a sinner steps out, he knows he's lost without God. He's sorry for, and he's coming down that aisle. He's coming to Christ and the rapture takes place and he hasn't prayed the prayer. I've known a lot of people prayed to prayer, friend. I don't know what they got or what they didn't get, and that's between them and God. I believe that salvation is a heart issue. And it's a heart issue that affects your mind. It affects your thinking. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It's a life-changing event that takes place when the Spirit of God comes to live in your heart. And you've got the Holy Ghost of God living in. Oh, hey, you say, well, why are we talking? Hey, people today have that same problem, and yet they have the canon of Scripture. They've got the Bible. They've got the Word of God in their hand. They've got the Bible, and yet they doubt. They've got the church. 
They've got the assembly. You say, why do they doubt? They don't read their Bible and they don't assemble. Causes problems, folks. I had a, I, two boys. I ain't not even going to mention them. These were, uh, I dealt with them, dealt with them, dealt with them. And one night late, I mean, they, these, these kids didn't have any parental guidance, so they stayed up until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And one real late or early in the morning, my phone calls, and one of them tells the other preacher, my friend here is doubting his salvation. I'd done dealt with them half a dozen times. I told him, I said, I want you two in my study at the church at 7 o'clock in the morning. You say, you didn't deal with him? I told him I wanted to met. When I got there, that, he said, he's doubting his salvation. I told him, I said, if I didn't come to church anymore and you did, I'd doubt my salvation. I just, hey, I dealt with him just straight up. I dealt with him and dealt with him. Hey, friend, let me tell you, we've got people today that are doubting their salvation for several reasons. One, they don't read the Bible. Two, they don't symbol and three because this life is hard that everything is changing change and decay and all around I see the songwriter wrote hey they'll never know the America that us older people grew up in do you understand that America has died I believe it's in a Sadducee's grave from which there is no resurrection, friend. I believe we can do, and I want. Hey, I keep hope. I, I vote. I try to be an old-fashioned American. I love my flag. I love my country. Don't kneel, take a knee to my flag unless you're thanking God for it. Leave my nation alone. You don't like America? Hey, I will promise you, I will buy you an airplane ticket to any place you want to fly as long as you never come back. It'll be one way written on it. Hey, I'm talking about things changing. I'm, I'm not just beating a political thing this morning, but I want you to understand something. I don't like what's going on. I'm too old. Went out and bought me a new pair of shoes yesterday. Oh, they had them. had all different colors and everything for these. Listen, I'm old-fashioned. I like the old-fashioned stuff, the old-fashioned way. I like the way I was raised. I want to stay the way I was raised. I thank God for it this morning. Listen, I'm talking about doubt. He dealt with their salvation. Now, why? Because one, spiritual persecution. If you live godly in this world, this world is not going to be your friend. I met some preachers and they said, everybody in the county loves them. And I thought to myself, he ain't preaching nothing's why they love him. I'm not talking about being mean. I'm talking about being straight with the Word of God. They didn't like Jesus Christ. They didn't like John the Baptist. They didn't like any of the apostles. They didn't like the prophets. They stoned that crowd. And we think we're going to be popular with the masses when we preach the Word of God. I doubt it. It don't work that way. Now, they doubted their salvation. Lord, I just ask God to remind me. Remind me of my great salvation this morning. What a thrill it is to be saved and know it. Is that not the joy of your life that you're saved? And every morning, hey, I don't know when I'm going to live or when I'm going to die. I'm 74 years old. And Dot, you're not old enough to be my mama. You're old enough to be my sister. A little bit older sister. <laughs> Amen. Uh, she's just 85. Man, I, I've got that much age on my little sister. I've got more than that age difference between us this morning. Listen, I'm getting a little long in the tooth. I'm getting up in my age. Hey, I thank God for that. I sat on the deck this morning just thanking God that one of these days, just like the day, I'm going to get to go to the house. But until then... Are we going to stay with the stuff or are we going to just give up? You'll never stay with the stuff until you've got blessed assurance Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Hey, praising my Savior all the day long, the songwriter wrote, 
What a blessing it is to know that you've got a great salvation in Christ. Wonderful redemption. Romans said being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hey, does it get any better than that? Saved by grace. Hallelujah to God. Didn't have to work my way to heaven. I don't have to keep what I've got. I've got something that is eternal in its nature. Did you know that eternal life is the only kind of life God gives? It gives no other this morning. He's given us deliverance this morning. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians, who delivered us from so great a death. <laughs> you know what God did? God took hell off of the horizon. You know I never worry about hell. Unless I'm witnessing or seeing a sinner, I, I don't think about hell for me. I don't dream about going to hell. I don't think I'm going to hell. I don't feel like I'm going to hell. Listen, I am fireproof. Hell is gone. That's why he used the terminology, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him, he used that terminology, should not. What's he doing? He's looking at the child of God on the other side. You know, God sees us already home. Aren't you glad that what you've got is eternal in its nature? I don't know what the world's going to throw at us. I'm not trying to be a super Christian this morning. I just know that nothing on the face of this earth is going to change what God did in my heart. Nothing will... Do. Hey, it's it, despite me... Boy, oh, what a blessing. And then he said, and doth deliver, friend. Hey, he's delivering us today. Hey, we're doing good, aren't we? Huh? Anybody starving to death yet? Don't worry about tomorrow. Take no thought for tomorrow. Boy, hey, the Lord, hey, he said, what you eat or, or, or what, what you going to sleep under? He said, having food and uh, raiment, he said, be there with content over in Matthew chapter number 6. God said, if you ate a breakfast this morning, that's a whole lot more than a lot of people had. A lot of people won't eat this morning, tonight, tomorrow, or tomorrow night. I, hey, I, I want to set the record straight this morning that God has been good to us. Do you hear me? Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. The Bible said with Him there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And I understand the context. He was talking about that if God has to in light of sin that's unrepentant, He will take you to, uh, to heaven. We record... Hey, when we talk about the Lord, every good gift, they didn't read chapter number 1, verse 15, 16. The Bible said in sin, when it's finished, bring it forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every... Hey, hey let me... I thank God this morning that we're saved for... Every, hey, He's going to deliver us one day through the rapture of the church. You don't want to deal with that. But He gave us something else. He gave us a great transformation. I'm glad this morning that I am not what I used to be. Amen. We went to Hamrick's yesterday. Oh, <laughs> I love to take Barbara up to Hamrick's. I just make sure she got her cell phone and it's where she can answer me so I can find her, okay? You know what? Something changed at Hamrick's. You know, usually a bunch of old men sitting out in the front is all old women. I thought, where, where are we supposed to sit? I mean, that's, our, that's not their seat. That's our seat. You say, why? I don't like to follow Barbara along because she never had any girls. She doesn't have any females to, to go out and shop with. So if I'm following her, she thinks I'm bored stiff. She say, well, I guess I've seen enough. I, I go ahead, hey, shop, shop. You know what I spent all my time with a hammer? Looking at all the junk that I could buy that's been seen on TV. You know, I'm one of these guys like, I like, trinkets. Now I like to take her to Big Lock up here at Simpsonville because I drop her off at the door. 
I go to Harbor Freight right around the corner there. Hey, man, that's, that's the boys play in. I let her play, and then I play, and we don't play well together. But I thank God for something. I thank God that God changed my life. Changed it. He's given us complete forgiveness this morning. Heaven forgive all our sin. You know, people talk about their past sin. I don't say a lot about my past because one, it's none of your business. And two, I'm not proud of it. But I'm not always proud of my life after I got saved either. You hear me? We're sinners. I believe a child of God can backslide and virtually do anything anybody else can with the judgment of God being temporal in nature. And don't you think God won't jerk your string? God is a good disciplinarian. He dealt a lot of that with the book of Proverbs, how to discipline your children, friend. He's a good disciplinarian. Huh? But I thank God this morning that He forgave, he forgave me. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Colossians, he said this, having forgiven all your trespasses. Aren't you glad? Thank God that your sin's gone this morning. Hey, I take it to God. I leave it alone. Listen, some people walking around worrying about what I did, what I did. Hey, is it covered? Is it gone? What are you worrying about it for? You just pick it up. Today's the first day of the rest of your life. How you live for God, how you do it today. Hey, it's like these little kid things. You pull it up and the writing goes away, son. Today's the first day of the rest of my life. I can live for God all I want to. Forgiveness. Reconciliation, buddy. He said we're reconciled. And then God's given us something else if you let Him. He's given you a real blessed peace this morning. Listen, do you have peace? God wants you to. He said, my peace I give unto thee. My peace I leave unto you. I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's a facsimile of John 14, 27. All right. Isn't that a blessing? Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed upon thee because he trusteth in thee. Our peace this morning is not found necessarily. Now listen, I thank God for peace of heart. I still say that peace of mind comes through a pure conscience. Clean conscience makes a soft pill at night. I told Barbara last night, I said, I'm going to bed. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> You can stay up as long as you want to stay up. I I was trying to stay up because you were staying up because we like to go to bed at the same time. All right, we turn the light out together. Hey, we go to bed together. We don't get up together. Barbara doesn't wake up good. I wake up, bam. I'm on my feet. I sit on the side of the bed three seconds. She said, what's the matter? <laughs> Look at her grinning back here. Are you feeling all right? You're not getting up. I'm trying to get my balance. Get older, your feet get numb. That's why you fall down. Your feet are just a miracle of muscles and tendons and everything. And while you're sitting, standing still, see, I can put my feet like this. Look at here. I'm still perfectly balanced. I can go, you know why? Because my feet are shifting. But when you get old, your feet start getting numb. They cannot feel the floor. That's why you don't walk good when you get old. A lot of times, I, I feel for Barbara's feet with my feet. And I think I'm pushing against her foot, but I push and there's no resistance there. Hey, I'm talking about you get numb, you get old. But I thank God this morning, no, I'm not going to oil the organ. I got reminders set up. Amen.
I like these iPads. They send me my reminders this morning. I'll do that later. A blessed peace, having made peace through the blood of Christ. And then thank God we've got an eternal inheritance. I'm not going to deal with that. And one day He's going to give us a translation. Now, let me just break it down and say it this way. If you've got a peace problem this morning and an assurance problem this morning, it's something that you can fix. I'm not complaining, I'm just explaining, as my mother would say. If you know that you've been saved by the grace of God, God wants you to be trusting Him, and it is the hardest thing in the world to do, but it is so easy to preach. It doesn't just make good preaching. Now, let's go outside and let's live in this world. You go to your work and say, I don't punch a clock anymore. I know what it's like working in the mines. Working with coal miners underground is like working with construction workers outside of the mines. Anybody ever work construction? That's the filthiest mouth. Huh? Filthiest mouth people you've ever been around in your life. Filthy mouth. Same way in the coal mines. When they go down there, it's dangerous work. So that kind of gives them this macho thing to kind of cover things up down there. You say, well, is it bad down there? Let me tell you something. I have, hey, I have tried to go, hey, tried to stay and my feet wouldn't let me go. That has nothing to do with my salvation. It just assures me if the roof falls in, I'm going to get there a little bit quicker. Amen. He's telling these people not to doubt their relationship with God. You may doubt a lot of things in this life, but listen, if you're saved and know it, you ought not ever just, hey, I'm talking about give God every benefit of the doubt. I don't care what comes your way. God's going to help you through it. He's going to take care of it for you. I look back over the years. Barbara and I have had some tough walking to do over the years. We've been together next month 60 years. Been married 53 of us. 60 years ago, I met that girl, fell in love with her, and never turned loose of her. But I want to tell you what, everything hasn't been roses. It's not been that way. But I thank God it has been worth it. Living for Christ and putting your faith in Him makes this world worth it. To stand this moment. We're going to have an invitation. I can spend a lot more time here. But the first thing he did, he just reminded them of their salvation. Thank God for eternal life. If you need to come this morning, the musicians come, you come. If you're here this morning, not sure you're saved.